my channel. Today we are working with the Sunday sketch from Citrus Twist Kits and this is the sketch we're going to be using. Um, when I look at it my first thought is an eight and a half by eleven but I am actually going to convert it down to a seven by eight point two five. I want it to go into a particular album and um, that's the size that I'm going to do the page as. The other thing that I'm going to switch around a little bit is I know that this page, I'm going to have it on the right side of my album because there's something else over here. And because of that, I want this big strip of paper to be on the right side. So I'm actually going to turn the sketch upside down and use it this way. And that's something that you can do with sketches. You can turn them any way you want and it gives you so many different options. So this is what I'm going to use as my inspiration. I have printed out some of the digital papers from this month's kit. In fact, I have some different colors to go with the pictures that I am going to want to use. And then I also used the cut files, a couple of the cut files from... Um, the recent release and that's why there's already some cut marks out of this paper because I'm going to use happy camper as my title what I am probably going to move the title around and maybe put it this way but we'll see how things go I have also made some secondary cuts I have not weeded all of these yet but what I plan to do is layer these, I'll take the centers out, and that way I can make a more of a chipboard um, dimensional piece for my title. So already you can see the thickness of that and how it makes it come stand off the page a little bit. So that'll be fun. So I am gonna put you on fast forward. I'm probably gonna actually stop the camera for a little bit and weed these um, and come back when everything's all ready to go. And, uh, We'll see how this page comes together. Okay, so I'm back having weeded all of my cut files. Um, this is actually, I believe, two different collections in the Citrus Twist shop, the Happy Camper and then um, one of the summer collections. I cut out three different cut files. One's going to be my title, this Happy Camper, and I cut three images out of each piece. And the, first, the bottom two are white cardstock, just from my stash, or from my scraps, I should say. And then the top one is from the Going Places collection paper. I did that with all of the cut files because I wanted to get a dimensional look, kind of like chipboard to all of these cut files so they weren't just flat on my page and in the end I love how they came out they do look dimensional and kind of pop off the page now one thing I would advise uh, because these are so thin or at least the title is so thin you see a little bit of the bottom layers popping through now I just used white and it works great, but had I used something like black or red or some striking color, it would not have looked as well. You would have been able to see some of that darker color coming through. So if you wanna do this at home, I would recommend picking a color for your bottom, either white, like a regular chipboard might be, uh, or picking something that will blend well with whatever your top piece of paper is. So you can see what I've done is I've put an acrylic block over the final layers. That will help adhere the three layers together and make sure that they stick down before I manipulate them and put them on my page. So what I end up doing is I just put them to the side and put the block back on just to make sure that they are adhered before I get to that next stage. So now I'm just showing, I printed my pictures approximately uh, three by two and a half. And the sketch shows three block images that I interpreted as three photos. 
the sketch actually shows one can be journaling and two photos. You could also use cut aparts, you could use journal cards, you could just do one photo and have some embellishments in the other block areas. But I had enough pictures that I chose to do three pictures. Now my main picture, the one that I want to bring focus to is the one in the middle. And so what I'm going to do is I backed it with some white cardstock just to give it a very small like eighth of an inch border around all sides and then I will also raise it on foam so it pops up even more and will catch the attention of the the reader as being the focal point that I want them to look at the most so I picked this kind of ombre colored orange pink yellow paper from the collection as well as the green checkerboard. I wanted to pull in some of the green from the pictures and then the title is also blue which pulls in a lot of blue from the pictures as well. But I really loved how summery and vibrant the yellow orange paper was and plus I needed to pull in some color. I couldn't just do blue and green papers because then it blended too much with the pictures. So I think this combination ends up working out just right. Now the bottom picture, at least in the sketch, was a pocket and there's a tag that pulls out and the sketch shows uh, putting your journaling on the tag. I loved that idea and because I have three pictures and they're pretty large in relation to the size of this page I do want to put my journaling on a tag and so you can see I'm pulling out my red line tape so I can make a pocket with that bottom picture now one thing I didn't mention at the beginning was this page is cut to 7 inches wide by 8.25 inches high and that is going to fit in my life crafted 6x8 album my daughter has an album or I've made her an album and this page will go into her album and what I talked about at the beginning was I knew I wanted this on the right side of her album because I already have something on the left side. So now what I'm doing is I had pulled out some of these arrows from the travel collection last year. They are still in the shop if you want to go look or pick those up. I found this wood grain arrow that I was auditioning to add to the spread and I do put it on later. I love the wood grain and how it complements the wood grain in the sign in the picture. Plus I also felt I needed a third arrow. I've got the um, silhouette cut file at the top or I should just say cut file. I used my silhouette to cut it out but you can use any cutting machine. Cricut, Brother Scan and Cut. Uh, the shop has four different file types when you buy the package. So uh, back to the arrows, I needed a third for a visual triangle as well as to make kind of a third cluster of embellishing. So I pulled out these arrows from my stash and I also pull out some puffy stickers from my stash. So this was a fun way to use up some of my stash because we don't have any physical embellishments with this digital collection, which is why I made some with the cut files. And then I also was able to pull out my stash and that's sort of kind of a win-win in all the way around. Get to use up some of my product and mix it with some of the newer stuff, which is fun. So I am just taking the smallest red line tape that I have, which was a quarter of an inch and I'm putting it on three sides so I can make a pocket. Uh, I am not raising it up at all from the page. It's going to be fairly flat and then I pulled over a tag to just try to see. It was too big but I wanted to kind of see if the idea was going to work and, if, and it does. I end up taking that tag and using it as a template and making my own tag in a little bit later in the video. So here's where I put down my focal picture 
and it was up on the foam tape that I had mentioned. And now I think I'm at a point where I think I started hearing everything down. I know that I'm not going to be moving things around. I know basically where I want most of the pieces to go. I loved having this arrow that points to the image of my daughter and her friend at the top. And then the darker color wood grain arrow points to the focal point. And it's a little bit darker in color, so I think your eye goes there and then helps your eye move towards the main picture that I want. Now, the all the colors on these arrows match this collection perfectly. And I originally thought I was going to use a bunch of the hearts from the sticker sheet. I end up not because I decide I want them to be a little bit smaller and I find another sticker sheet, here it is, where I end up using these smaller hearts. And I think it looks better from um, a size perspective. I'm also going to use some of these puffy word phrases. This was another great way to use things from my stash that I hadn't used. This was from the, I think it was the February kit. Um, these stickers are still in the shop too, so definitely check those out if you like those. So now I'm just auditioning what colors I want to put and what colors do I need in different areas of the spread. These are some cardstock stickers. Um, they are also in the shop. They were from my stash and I end up using one of those uh, on top of the picture of the group picture. I actually do try to audition something else there and so we'll see me playing around with that in a little bit. I believe that says epic and then I'm just doing some different colors so I can have kind of yellow, pink, and blue in each of the clusters. I guess I decide Oh, this one said view. Once I saw the view, I knew I needed to switch that off. Now, I didn't want two yellows in the same cluster, so I switch out the yellow heart for a pink heart, and then I'm going to put the epic down below with a yellow heart. And I love how that looks. And then the heart over by the wood grain arrow is denim, and it does not necessarily match with the colors from the other clusters but all the girls in the picture are wearing denim shirts it was one of the requirements from camp that they have to have a denim um, shirt with their camp name on the back and so i thought the denim heart was perfect uh, goes in with, with the theme that um theme of the camp and the shirts and matches the colors in the picture so what I was thinking I was going to do first was take one of these white stickers and I cut it down into a banner shape. And I did really like it. I really love the sentiment that was on. But there was something about it that just felt a little bit too bright. There was something about the white that I felt was a little jarring. Now, I think I could have kept it. I think it would have looked fine. But after auditioning some other stickers, I end up going with a yellow, and that actually pulls in the yellow from the paper as well as the other clusters. And in the end, I like it better. The white would have been just fine. Um, but I end up going with a yellow, and you'll see that in just a second. And it ends up looking great. Um, so yeah, right here I'm just auditioning different pieces. And some of it is also trying to find the right sentiment. Just because I can find something in the right color uh, doesn't mean that it has the right sentiment on it as well. So here we go. This is the one I finally decide. I think it says awesome, hashtag awesome. And that's what I end up going with. So we'll stick that down in just a minute. And then after I finish deciding what all my embellishments are, I have to go back and work on my tag. So we'll see that in just a minute. Now what I ended up doing is in Photoshop Elements, I made a tag that was two inches 
tall by four inches wide. And I typed out my journaling in that size to fit on that tag and printed it out. Now, I didn't want my tag to be too thick that it would be hard to slip into that pocket. So I ended up printing out the back of my journaling um, on the same piece of paper. Now that was a little bit tricky. What I ended up having to do was do it a couple times to get the placement right on that to make sure it was printed in the right place on the back. Usually what I end up doing is printing two different pieces of paper and then gluing them back together, back in the front and back together. And this time I wanted it to be as thin as possible. So now I'm just poking my holes, or punching my holes, I should say, so I can put some ribbon in. I end up doing some hole reinforcers as well with a punch that I have. And I did those in white. A lot of times I will use the pattern paper so I can get a color um, emphasis over on that side, but I really wanted to keep it white because I already have three clusters and so I didn't really want the eye going over to, you know, a, a pop of green or a pop of yellow over there. So I just did white hole reinforcers and now I'm just using some white twine or I guess it's twine, not ribbon, to make a bow and I will put that into the pocket. So the reader will know that there is something there, but it's not so eye-catching that it pulls your focus away from the other areas that I want you to look at. If you have any questions about how this layout came together, please leave them in the comments below. I um, had a great time putting this together and using the sketch. If you use the sketch to make a layout, uh, tag me in Citrus Twist. We would love to see how you interpreted the sketch. I hope you have a great crafting day and this pretty much wraps up this page. So again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I hope you like the video. See you in the next video.